They are the most uncomfortable lashes I've ever worn. They just feel heavy and it's claiming to be fanned out. Fanned out my butt. I pff, swiftly threw it into the trash whoosh, as soon as I tried it. And there goes me getting off the Smashbox PR list. Listen, with the amount of makeup that I buy and try in a year, there are bound to be fails. And that's what today's video is about. I'm gonna talk to you about the worst makeup products that I tried in 2023. Hello and welcome if you are new here, my name is Rachel. And if you're not new here, thank you so much for coming back. This is all based on my own opinion. If you don't agree with me, or if I'm talking about your favorite products that you tried this year, then I'm happier for you than I am for myself, obviously, because I don't wanna waste my money. I want to like everything. But sometimes, just based on my own preferences, things just don't become my most favorite products, and that's okay. That's okay. Uh, this is all in good fun. I know it's gonna be somewhat of a negative video, but the best makeup I tried this year video should be coming fairly soon after this one, so stay tuned for that. But let's do it. Okay, I have separated these into eyes, lips, and face. And let's start off with the eye products. So first things I wanna talk about are the CoverGirl eyeliner pencils. I don't know the exact uh, name. And by the way, a lot of these products I don't have anymore because I've decluttered them. So if I don't have them, I'm gonna pop them up on the screen, but these CoverGirl eyeliners. I went to a dance competition. I am a professional ballroom, country ballroom dancer, and I forgot a pencil eyeliner for my waterline. And the only place that was available to me to buy something like that was the drugstore. And I found these CoverGirl eyeliners and I just bought like a black and a brown. And I thought, how bad can they be? They're a pencil eyeliner from a reputable brand, CoverGirl. They were, they were awful. Uh, I had to scrape my waterline a hundred times just to get any sort of pigment. And then I blinked once and the eyeliner wore off in the waterline <laughs> in patches. It was very weird. It's also possible that they were old. Like it, that's what it seemed like to me that they were just like old, dried out eye pencils. But that is not what I'm looking for when I'm looking for something for my waterline. I want it to be creamy, one swipe pigment, and I want it to last. Uh, that, that eyeliner did none of those things. The next product I wanna talk about in the eye category is the e.l.f. Instant Lift Brow Pencil. I did mention this in a video uh, at some point this year talking about how I didn't like it and so many people commented saying that they really enjoy the pencil. So this is just, I guess, a matter of preference. It is a very fat tipped pencil, almost like using a crayon for the brows. And that is just not my preference. I prefer like a micro tip fine brow pencil. I actually like Elf's other brow pencil that is in that smaller pencil form. But the tip was just way too big for me to get like really precise with my brows, which is what I prefer. And then on top of that, it is like their really inexpensive brow pencil. It retails for $3. The, the actual packaging is so cheap. The mechanism is kind of broken where I would use it and like put pressure on my brows with the pencil and the pencil would just push in. <laughs> like as soon as I put it to my brow, the pencil would push in and then I'd have to twist it back up. My cat is playing with a ping pong ball in the other room. So sorry if you can hear that. I didn't like this brow pencil all around. It just wasn't, it just wasn't for me. And by the way, as I'm going through these products, I'm trying to tell you why I dislike them. And that may or may not align with your preferences. So. I just hope that I'm giving you information about why I don't like these products. I'm not just trashing them to trash them. There's a specific reason why I don't like it. The next thing that I wanna talk about is AF94. They, I think they launched last year and I've tried quite a few products from the brand. It is about Face's drugstore sister brand that is sold at Walmart. And I think a lot of the products that I've tried from the brand have been actually really nice. I really like their stick, like cheek color, cream cheek color. I enjoy their eyeliners. But one thing from the brand that I tried that I absolutely despised was their false lashes. Probably some of the worst false lashes I've ever tried. I've been wearing false lashes for a really, really, really long time. I wear them all the time. Like I said, I am a dancer, so I've been wearing false lashes for many years for the sake of performing. And these lashes, although they look pretty, definitely in the packaging and on the eyes, they are the most uncomfortable lashes I've ever worn. They just feel heavy. The band is so incredibly stiff. It's like poking me in the eye. And there are so many options now at this point we've come to. There are great options for lashes that look beautiful. And even if you want 
dramatic lashes that feel lightweight on the eyes, and these just were not it. Even though they were inexpensive from the drugstore, I still feel like there are drugstore eyelashes, like Ardell's, that you could get that are dramatic, that are feel way more lightweight, that are flexible, all of that. I just, I didn't, uh, I didn't like these lashes at all. The next thing I wanna talk about is something that I got in PR from Kaja. This is the Kaja Wink Stamp, okay? We've all, we've all seen this. This is one of these TikTok items, you know, where it's like kind of gimmicky. It has a wing stamp, one on each side for each eye. And the functionality of this, I just, I don't get it. Uh, first of all, for me, I am at 37, so I am i don't have mature skin, but I definitely don't have tight skin like a teenager. And I feel that when I go to stamp this on my eye, the actual stamp of the wing does not come through as it does on the stamp because there are like some slight maybe folds in my eyes. Like I said, I don't have that many folds in my eyes, but I do have some where the skin is not super tight. So I feel like you have to be under the age of 18 to get the real, true wink stamp. <laughs> it's so hard to use because one side is for each eye. It's really hard to match them up. When you're using it, it's hard to see the angle of the wing stamp. I just, it's gimmicky. Once I got it on, I kind of could see that it was a guide for someone that maybe isn't versed in doing winged eyeliner. That's only if you can get them even just by luck, <laughs> you know? Not for me. Uh, I wouldn't suggest this product. Uh, another thing I wanna talk about in the eye category, which is fairly new to my collection, is I got a package from Smashbox and they sent me a handful of their products. And this is one of their uh, products that they sent me. This is the Super Fan Fanned Out Mascara. This is one of the worst mascaras I've ever used. It is the goopiest, gloppiest, chunkiest mascara I've ever, ever used and it's claiming to be fanned out, fanned out my butt. The actual wand is a plasticky wand that is kind of um, almond shaped. And the idea of it is interesting and fine, but there is so much product that comes out on the wand. And even when I scrape it off, the actual like mascara product is so gloopy and thick. It is such a mess. It is such a mess. And I don't mind if I get a little bit more of a voluminous look from a mascara, but this was just out of control gloopy. Uh, that's all I have to say. That's, that's all I have to say about it. It's not, it's not, it's not a good mascara. And there goes me getting off the Smashbox PR list. Okay, let's talk about two eyeshadow palettes. I've tried so many eyeshadow palettes this year and I am going to do a ranking every single palette I tried this year uh, video, which I'm kind of scared about. It's gonna be intense. But these two palettes, I would say, are gonna come down in the bottom, you know, the bottom section of the countdown because I just don't think they're good and I don't, I don't recommend them, okay? So the first one, I, I've mentioned these so many times, you're probably so sick of me talking about it, but it's the Ace Vitae Flora Collection. I really don't like the quality of these palettes. That's what it comes down to. I love the packaging. I love the theming. I love how small they are. I love the color stories of all of these. They're so gorgeous, but the mattes in this, I just can't, I can't get use out of them. They're so incredibly hard pressed in the pan. They're so sheer. I'm really not able to pick them up on my brush to get any sort of pigment on my eyes. Uh, I was really disappointed in the matte formula. The shimmers are pretty. I can work with the shimmers, but I'm a matte girl. Like if the mattes just don't function for me, I'm not gonna reach for the palette. So I am decluttering these. I mean, I did declutter them, quote, declutter them from my collection, but I'm gonna give them to like my sisters-in-law because maybe someone who likes a very, very, very sheer application who doesn't like pigment in their eyeshadows would like this. And now also I wanna say that I may have gotten a bad batch because I have mentioned these on my channel several times. I've had people tell me that they have the same experience as me and I've also had people tell me that they don't have the same experience as me. So it could be a batch thing, but I can only judge from the ones I have. I don't enjoy those palettes. And then the next palette I hate to mention because it is a collaboration with a creator and I don't really love talking down about collaborations because I think it's a wonderful thing when someone gets to collaborate with a brand that they love, but I just didn't enjoy this palette. And this is the Eternal Love Palette from Dose of Colors and Trevor. Uh, I've really expected a lot more based on the Frankation palette that they came out with a couple, 
couple more than a couple of years ago. I thought the formulas of that palette were just phenomenal. And I just think that the quality of this is not the same. It's not in my preference. Do I think it's a horrible palette? No, but it's just not for me. I think there are so many more palettes at a lower price point that you can get that are similar to this. And that's kind of where, where I'm like not wanting to recommend it. The mattes are very powdery and not very pigmented. The shimmers are very, very dry. So not a fan, unfortunately. Um, yeah. All right, I only have two lip products to talk about. And I tried so many lip products. And by the way, uh, these are like the worst of the worst. These are things that like, I really don't like. There are some things that I've tried this year that I've been like, it's fine, you know, like take it or leave it. But these are the things that like, I just, I don't like. So that's why there's only two products. So the first one I don't have anymore. I pff, swiftly threw it into the trash whoosh, as soon as I tried it. Joa Beauty. I did a full face of Joa Beauty at the very beginning of this year. And I actually came out of that video with so many favorite products, but one product that was not good is their lip oil. The applicator was the weirdest applicator I've ever seen in a, in a lip oil. It was kind of like a nail polish brush, but the bristles were hard. So it was almost like a cross between a spatula and a nail polish brush. Beats me why they did that. But the worst thing of all was the smell and the taste. It smelled straight up like a floral perfume. And when you put it on the lips, and you breathe in, it hits the back of your throat. So it's like you're spraying floral perfume into your throat. It's not for me. I actually think the uh, texture of it was fine. Not bad, not good, fine. But the scent and the taste, I just couldn't handle it. And then the second lip product I wanna talk about is the Give Beauty Spark the Fire Plumping Lip Balm in LOL. The idea of this is awesome, like a plumping lip balm, not a lip gloss, right? That a lot of these plumping lip products are. And the color is really pretty. It's a very, very sheer application. I really like the packaging. I like Give Beauty's lipsticks. Like I have one of her matte lipsticks and I think it's really beautiful. When I tell you this is the most burning lip product I've ever tried, I mean that wholeheartedly. I would say that I am moderately sensitive to burning lip products. I can handle most of them. Do I love them? No. Uh, do I hate them? No. This. Absolutely not. It made me want to rip my lips off my face. I know that sounds dramatic, but it's the truth. This is like you dipped your lips into a bowl of hot sauce. That's what that feels like to me. I only recommend this to you if you want something that burning. Like if you are a masochist and you like that kind of a thing, go for it. Other than that, I would try to avoid this. All right, let's talk about face. So. I have a skincare product to talk about. This is the Revolution Pro Miracle Cream. I did get this in PR from Makeup Revolution. And I think this is trying to be a dupe slash alternative for the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, right? Miracle Cream, Magic Cream. <laughs> the actual packaging is very luxurious. It is a glass bottle that is heavy. You chuck this at someone's head, they're definitely gonna get a concussion. But once again, the smell, Oh my gosh. This reminds me of when I was a kid smelling my mom's like scented lotions that straight up smelled like potpourri. Like that's, it smells like potpourri. That's exactly what it smells like. And okay, I can handle it if it has a scent and I put it on and then the scent dissipates. No, the scent stays on. I put this on my face the first time I used it. I was like, whoa, very jarring scent. And I left it on for about 15 minutes. It was all I could smell. It was so strong. And it was all I was thinking about. <laughs> I can't go on with my day only thinking about how my face smells. I have other things to think about. So I had to wash it off. I, I couldn't stand how strong it smelled on my face after application. So it, I can't even speak for the performance of it. I couldn't get past the scent. The next thing I wanna talk about, I decluttered <laughs> way back in the beginning of the year. Uh, this is the NYX Blur Foundation. Uh, if I've ever felt that something was wrongly named as much as this, I can't remember because it absolutely did not blur anything on my skin. It enhanced the pores and texture on my skin. I have very oily acne prone skin and this was claiming to be like a matte skin like blurring skin tint. I believe it was marketed as a skin tint. No, it was cakey. It was dry on me oily skin. 
it made me look dry. It made my uh, lines on my face enhanced. It sunk into every single pore, line, crevice on my face. The color match was awful. It was, it was bad. It was bad. Uh, this is a very polarizing foundation. I've seen a lot of people really enjoy it. I've seen a lot of people that don't enjoy it. So uh, it, it, it was bad. It was definitely the worst foundation that I've tried this year. I'm not a big foundation trier. <laughs> I don't review a lot of foundations on my channel is what I'm trying to say, just because my skin is so sensitive. Like I have foundation on, I put foundation on maybe two hours ago and I already feel pain in my chin area. Like a lot of foundations make me break out, make my skin really like hurt. Uh, most days I can't wear foundation all day long because my skin is just so sensitive. So I don't like messing around with too many new foundations. All that to say, it was definitely one of the worst foundations I've tried this year. Uh, the worst foundation I've tried this year. I don't recommend it. The next thing I also don't have, I did declutter it. Flower Beauty came out with their liquid like wand products that a lot of brands came out with this year, trying to ride the coattails of uh, Charlotte Tilbury, you know, with the poof ball thing. I didn't like their products that they did. And I tried their highlighter last year, I believe came out last year. I didn't like that. They came out with a contour wand this year. Oh, oh no, baby, no. I believe I got the shade light and it looked like I smeared mud on my face. It was so incredibly hard to blend. The formula was very dry and a little too opaque. And I feel like with a product like that, the formula has to be for what I like, a little more gel-like, a little bit more buildable, and something that blends easily. Like I think the e.l.f. contour wands that they came out with were a way better version of the flower ones. And then also the color of the flower one was just way too cool toned for me. I didn't enjoy the color at all. It, it just wasn't for me. Now I'm not a contour person, so maybe I should have known that going in. Like I don't really want a contour color, but that was the only color that was offered for my skin tone. So I didn't enjoy it. And then the last thing I want to talk about is something that is definitely a preference thing. I don't think it's a bad product, but it just, for me, it was not a favorite of mine it was the Juvia's Place liquid blush. I also decluttered that. I got, I will put up on the screen what shade it was, but the shade that I got was way too deep for me. And there is a good shade range. I think if you have a medium to deep skin tone, this color would work for you, especially if you have a deep skin tone, because it was just way too pigmented for me. Even if I used the smallest amount, it ended up being patchy because there wasn't enough product to like give a smooth look, like an even layer to the skin. It would just end up being kind of like pouncy patches. Uh, I, I was not able to work with this just based on how pigmented it was. I like a liquid product. Again, like I said, with the contour wand where it's like a little more buildable, not something that's like a liquid lipstick off the bat. And that's what I felt like the Juvia's Place liquid blush was. All right. And that is it for the worst products that I've tried this year. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it, I guess. Leave me a comment down below, letting me know what some of the worst products that you tried this year were. I would really love to know your thoughts. And like I said, a best of 2023 video should be coming soon-ish. I don't know when, maybe in a week, something like that. But stay tuned for that because then I can give you some stuff that I do recommend. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot when you do that. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave. I do upload videos weekly and I'd love to see you back on my channel again. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.